Claire. And I'm Elton. And we're UK Barn Finds. Enough woolarding, Claire. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no, um, it's been a hectic few weeks. We had loads of plans of stuff we were going to do over Christmas. We got some bits done, didn't we? We did, but then Storm Hink had other ideas. Yes, and you may be able to hear in the background there's some gentlemen kindly fixing the damage to the workshop today. <laughs> so we can't really do much in here. I've done about an hour in total over the whole three or four weeks since we got this car. I'm really keen to get on with it, yeah. but as we can't work in here today, what are you going to be doing, my love? Well, it's naught degrees, it's flipping freezing, so I thought, why not take this out and give it a wash? She's not doing this under duress. Come on, let's go and do it. <laughs> let's do it. You didn't want to push this one, did you? Not really, no. No, and luckily, look who's popped oh, round. Oh, it's, it's Trigger! <laughs> and, uh, first time I've seen him all year, and look. <laughs> let's, um, let's give it a go. It's quite stiff. <laughs> We've got two problems. We've got um, the window that won't shut, but I do think that's gone up a little bit. I'll give it another go in a minute. We were overthinking this one because Claire, Mike, and I were just saying perhaps we need to um, put some tape or bung that up or do something. And then I remembered we've got two other Austin A30s with fuel caps. So I'll go and grab a fuel cap off one of those. So if you see a shiny fuel cap, you'll know it's off the black one. But I'm just going to try and get this window up and then we'll get washing. Or well, one of us will. There you are, that's in there. Sorted. Right, I'll go and get the petrol cap. Let's see if that'll fit. There we are. Please don't let me leave that on there, Claire, all right? No. Let's go. Your time to do some work. Okay. So here we go then. Time to get 40 plus years worth of barn dust off this lovely little car. Now I should point out that this isn't going to be one of those immaculate valet videos but it will be a thorough clean up inside and out so that we can get a good idea of what condition she's in and be able to start working on her without getting absolutely covered in barn dust.
told you, Claire, this car is going to attract a lot of people. <laughs> We're on the home straight now with this first pass. As we suspected, the bodywork is not in bad shape, apart from the dents, of course. Ah, my favourite part, the snow foam. Now there seems to be a debate as to whether you apply snow foam from the top down or from down to top. As you can see, I go from top to bottom. Feel free to crucify me in the comments if you wish. To give me a bit of a break to warm up, Elton kindly took over and gave the car a good going over with the sponge, and a grand job he did too. At last, the final rinse. It's so satisfying to see all that dirt off, and Elton and I will definitely enjoy not being covered in barn dust whenever we go near her. Sadly, I won't have the time to polish up the chrome for this video, but it's definitely on the to-do list. The car actually came with some replacement bits of chrome work, so we'll get those fitted too. Whoa, whoa! Claire! Honestly, that'll do, love. Okay. I can work on the car now, thank you. Okay. Um, you'll have to untangle yourself. Yes, <laughs> I'm a bit stuck. A bit of Kesha bondage going on yeah. over there. <laughs> Come on then, let's get her back. Good morning, today's another day and I'm going to have to tackle the interior. I'm sure it will be worthwhile and I'll feel hugely satisfied afterwards. Um, but the thought of dealing with all that muck and um, cobwebs particularly isn't exactly filling me with joy at this particular moment. But anyway, I need to crack on. Ordinarily, I'd take all these bits and pieces out now, but given that the uh, cobweb situation is the way it is. I think I'm going to hoover that lot out first. Right, Edward, let's get cracking. Okay, so that's good. Most of the monster cobwebs are out now. 
So I'm just going to get all the bits and pieces out. I've got some boxes and yeah, let's fill them up. One of the views from our previous video suggested that this could well be a very old cleaning tool from back in the day. So what I'm going to do is remove the mop bit, pop it through the wash um, and see if we can save it and keep it with the car. Anyone for a scotch egg? Now we found lots of coins in a dash and Elton thought it'd be quite fun to pop please in some Coca-Cola and see if we can clean them up a bit and perhaps see some of the dates and what sort of coins they were. So I'm going to give that a go now. Oops. After hoovering the carpets, I thought I would take a look underneath them. It all looks pretty solid, with the exception of this area here, which is by the driver's side rear passenger seat. Right, so as you can see, these seats are so <laughs> filthy. I don't think I've ever seen seats so filthy before. They're definitely going to be red, I think, because it's a bit of a giveaway. You can see just underneath there. Um, what colour we should hopefully be aiming for. I'm going to be using some Auto Glim interior shampoo, not sponsored. There are other interior cleaners available. It's just that we got a bulk load of these and we've got them lying around. So I thought I might as well use those. Um, I'm going to just test a small area and see how we get on. I'm just going to use, we'll do this little bit here and uh, Give it a brush. So I have done my test section on the seat. Good news and bad news. Bad news is that sadly the red has indeed faded quite considerably as you can see over time but I did three passes I could probably do another pass to be honest but it's cleaning it up quite nicely sort of a warm tan I suppose is what we've got left now and when you compare it to what it was previously not too bad I'm gonna crack on right so so give my arms a bit of a break from seat cleaning and now I've got a nice clean seat to sit on. I'm going to have a go at cleaning some of this dashboard. The dust and grime was so thick that I used big wipes to give everything a wipe down. I think they worked really well. OK, back to the seat cleaning. Each seat needed four to five passes in the end to get all the dirt out. But as you can see here, what a difference. It was incredible the amount of dirt that came out. You can see the dirt that sprayed off the brush onto the metalwork. This was the paper towel I used to wipe up with. And this was after the third pass. The seats have a few rips and tears, but I'm pleased with how they cleaned up. I just lightly hoovered the back of the front seats as you can see here, they're pretty threadbare. Whilst I was cleaning the glass, I found a few triplex glass markings. Now, thanks to our friend Nick, we found out that you can date the glass from the marking. Apologies if you know this already, but I thought I would share this with you in case you don't. Please note, this method only applies to cars made from the 1950s to January 1969. You will notice that there is a small dot above the R on triplex. A dot is etched above T, R, E and X to signify what quarter of the year the glass was produced. So with this example, it was April, May or June. 
Now the code will only give you the second digit of the year, so you need to know what decade your car was made. A30s were produced in the 1950s. You can see here that there is a small dot beneath the letter E in toughened. If you refer to the list on the left, E represents the digit 6. So what this is telling me is that this glass was produced in April, May or June of 1956, which makes it highly likely that this is the original glass. Here is the triplex mark from the driver's side window. Using the same code, I can see that this glass was produced in July, August or September of 1958, so not original. This makes sense though, because this was the side of the car that sustained the largest amount of damage from its fall into the ditch all those years ago. I'm going to pour this into the other one. Then I'm going to pop them on there. So they started to get it off. So now we've given the old girl a good clean up and had a good look around. What do we think in terms of when this car was laid up? Um, I'm going to go with what I said originally, Claire. Yeah. And I'm going to be quick because it's freezing. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> 1973. Okay. And what makes you come to that decision? Right. So we had the various things in here that we went through before. We had the crisp packets that were from nine, or they had a competition that ended in 74. Yeah. So they were obviously pre-74. Um, I forget what else there was, to be honest. There was this Scotch egg packet. I don't even know if you'll see that. I've got to find it again now. I always lose it on here. There. It's got a best before, I don't know the month, but 73 on there. Okay. Um, but the coins, we found a lot of coins on the dash. Yeah. I've cleaned up some of them. Okay. And I want to leave some just for posterity, as almost as they were. Um, and what you've got, nothing, even on the um, ones I haven't cleaned, nothing is later than 1971. Oh, okay. So these are all 1971. Interestingly, although decimalisation came in in 71, this 50p here is 1970. So I think that's a really early minted one. Okay, yeah. Minted as in when it was made, not like people think you <laughs> might be, dear, <laughs> living the life you lead. Mm. Uh, <laughs> anyway. And then obviously we've got some um, sort of pre-70s, and we've got this like two shillings, which is 1966. Something happened that year, I can't remember what it yeah, was. Yeah, something but... sporting, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> I don't think we won the Monte Carlo Rally that year, did we? No, no, no. I don't think so. Right, um, so yeah, so I'm going to go 1973. Yeah. But before you clear off, yeah. there was one other thing. Um, I thought I was going to find a Roman coin or something. Oh, right, okay. An R&W vending coin. Oh, wow, that looks interesting. Um, can you pop it down on the paper towel there so I can get a good look at it? it? Yeah. Do you want me to flick it over when you have? Yes, please. Um, cool, that's cool, that is. My guess is that's either from like a cigarette machine or fruit machine or something like that. Oh, okay, um, perhaps someone can let us know in the comments if they yeah. recognise that coin. It's before my time. Yes. I don't know those. But yeah, that's it. I'm, I'm going to go with 1973. The only cat among the pigeons, the red herrings, was there was a newspaper in the engine bay from like the mid to late 80s. Oh, okay. Um, we know from what the vendor told us, the car wasn't laid up that late. Um, my suspicion is when they moved the car from barn to barn, someone's removed the battery and for some reason put that there, whether there was a spillage or something. Right, yeah, that could um, make sense. But everything else points to 1973. So that's what I'm going to stick with. That's my final answer. Okie dokie. Sounds good to me. Can I have my workshop back now? Please? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I finished cleaning. You can get back in the workshop and you can get back to starting your tinkering on the car. One thing is though, yeah, yes. can I get to drink the rest of the Coke? You can have that with my pleasure deal <laughs> oh, 
that was quite the journey getting her clean but at least she's not a biohazard now and I'm really pleased at how she turned out considering she'd been covered in dust for over 40 years. I guess the next step for Elton and I is to have a look at the mechanicals. Will it start? Can we get her driving and stopping? You'll have to stick along on the journey with us now you've come this far. Please remember to like, share and subscribe. It really helps the channel like ours out. Hope you enjoyed this video and take care and we'll see you soon. Bye for now.